Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a look at the new Masters of the Universe, Masterverse, Revelation, King Grayskull. Grayskull is a Target-exclusive deluxe figure that is based off the character's appearance in the new Masters of the Universe, Revelation cartoon. As such, he looks pretty markedly different from the King Grayskull from the 2000X cartoon. Namely, he doesn't look like a bigger version of He-Man. Now, I'm not unaware that Grayskull's character design in Revelation has stoked some controversy. Some people being very much for it, some people being very much against it. Uh, not really here to get into that, right? I'm here to review a figure. I know everyone's got their personal feelings on the Grayskull thing. But I'm just going to judge the figure for, you know, what it is, how well it works, and the overall coolness of the design. I will say, given the character's race swapping, it is a little weird that they decided to say that Hero was his son, like direct son, because Hero doesn't look anything like this King Grayskull, so genetics must work in a very strange way in Eternia. Regardless of all that though, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're gonna take a look at Grayskull's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll check out the figure itself, all of its accessories, we'll see all its posability, have a lot of fun, we'll swap parts around, Naturally, we'll be doing some group shots of comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So King Grayskull comes in your large deluxe size packaging, which has a very, very big window where the figure itself is front and center. You see an alternate head, his shield, two alternate hands, and both of his swords here, which these two swords represent the two halves of the Sword of Power. Because that sword was formed by forging these two together into one blade. And while this shining golden sword represents, I guess, kind of the light half of the Sword of Power and is kept in Preternia, which is basically heaven, this purplish sword right here represents the dark half and is kept in Subternia, which is basically hell for Eternia. Uh, that whole dual sword thing is also a callback to the original play feature of the Sword of Power in the vintage Master of the Universe line, where He-Man himself came with just a silver half of a sword and then Skeletor came with a purple half and you had to put them together to make the actual Sword of Power. So it was a really nice little Easter egg to call back to that. Obviously the designs they went with are a lot different and in my opinion much better because, you know, it's much cooler than just a plain flat gray or flat purple sword. They're much more ornate. Uh, you know, they don't actually physically combine in a traditional sense. They have to be pretty much magically forged and then they transform into the Sword of Power. So it's not like the two blades just, you know, actually touch together and make that sword. All right, little history lesson aside. On this side of the package, you get the character's name again. It says, Heroic Ancestor of He-Man. So he is established to still be He-Man's ancestor, in spite of uh, kind of moving the family tree around with Hero and all that. You get this really nice artwork of King Grayskull here on the side, and I, I love the lighting. You get like a sunset going on. You can see Preternia in the background utilizing the uh, Eternia playset from the old toy line. He's got the Sword of Power that he's just resting on the ground now. He doesn't actually come with a completed Sword of Power, which is interesting. You show him with it, but he only has the two halves. All right, and then on the back, we get some other really just phenomenal artwork. I love Motu's artwork. I really do. So you get the... Uh, Eternia playset slash Preternia in the background with the sunset. Casts a really nice glow on the character up front. And he appears to be either combining or separating his two swords. Either that or just, I don't know, charging power between them. Now we know, story-wise, you can't just physically put the swords together and make them combine. They had to be heated in a forge with what was like the power of a star or something crazy like that. It also cost us our dear friend Roboto. Rip, my dude. Rip. And over here, we get the character's name, his title again, and then some flavor text. And it says, Since the dawn of Eternia, there has always been a hero to protect the planet's sacred magic. The first of those heroes, and the first to hold the mantle of He-Man, was King Grayskull. Now resting alongside the other heroes in Preternia, King Grayskull holds the key for the adventurers to return to Eternia and save the magic from vanishing into oblivion. So I like that write-up. It's very detailed. It you know very much goes through his kind of story dynamic in the show. I do find it weird that they say he's the first to hold the mantle of He-Man. Um, I don't think any of the heroes, you know, the wielders of the Sword of Power or anything, I don't think any of them aside from He-Man were ever actually called He-Man. Like, Prince Adam is He-Man, then they all had their own names. 
you had Hero, and you had some other characters that I can't really remember the names of. As far as I know, King Grayskull just went by King Grayskull, or, or just Grayskull. Um, I don't... It's kind of weird. <laughs> I, I feel like it's just a bit of a misnomer there, but again, pretty small detail. Down here we get some cross cells. We get Savage He-Man, who was one of the previously released figures. You get King Grayskull himself. You get the new Wave 3 Teela, which is still proving very hard to find, even though her Wave Mates are showing up. Sorry, Wave 4 Teela. Then you have the Wave 3 Andra. She's Wave 3. Uh, Deluxe Trapjaw, Wave 4 Merman, and Stinkor, who I believe was also Wave 3? Yeah, Wave 3. Alright, so these cross cells are interesting because they're a bit of a mixed bag. They don't always tend to stay within one wave like uh, most toy lines do and like Origins would do. Uh, they really just kind of take a little sprinkling of everything and throw it in there. So I do find that interesting. That's kind of all over the place. So yeah, the packaging looks great. I think the artwork is very, very well done. I love the sunset effect they got, just permeating everything there. Really like it. But now it's time to open this thing up and play with the figure inside. All right now we get to see Grayskull out of the packaging. So we have the figure with all of his accessories laid out. First, let's get a good look at him and check out his cape, which is a very cool soft goods cape. But one thing I haven't mentioned yet, it also has wires, plastic coated wires around the outer edge so that the cape can be posed in the different dynamic positions. How cool is that? Look at that. This is something that you almost never see at a retail level. This is typically something you see at like a high-end collectible level. Usually at retail, you either get a soft goods, you know, cape or robe or whatever, uh, whatever it is. It just kind of hangs limply with gravity. Or you get a plastic or rubber molded one, which will usually have some sort of dynamic shaping to it to make it look like, you know, the wind's blowing or something. Uh, but to get this specific combo, pretty rare at like the 20 to 30 dollar level so i think that is a really nice touch it's very very cool now one thing i don't think is so great about the cape you might be able to see it here but i'll make it more obvious there's a big black tag right here on the inside like a big old long one that just talks about the wire stiffeners in there and uh, surface wash and all that it's basically a laundry tag on this little tiny action figure cape which i didn't is that necessary? Is that a normal thing to have tags on toys' clothing? I don't know. Uh, but it's a bit distracting because it's this big black tag that you can see from a lot of angles. Now, naturally you can just cut the thing off, and I'm sure a lot of people will. But I'm not a fan of having to alter or damage a toy, hence, you know, hurting its value, uh, in order to make it more visually appealing. Why they would have to have that big obnoxious tag on there, I don't know. Or if they're going to have it... They could have at least have done it in the same red color as the cape so it blends in because it's just this jet black color and i mean it's it's a bit of an eyesore so yeah not a fan of that choice i don't know if they were honestly required to do that or not maybe they were i, I don't know but i mean it, it's weird to me so yeah not great there all right now the cape is removable it's kind of cool right the whole woolly shoulder pad thing it's got his braid go right over it uh, so it attaches through the straps of the harness here with some Velcro. So we're going to go ahead and take it off. Just undo the Velcro here. Slide it through. And then slide it down his braid. Because you do have to make sure the braid goes over this as you pull it up. Alright, then he gets the more standard He-Man-like appearance without all the extra goodies. Looks more like just a typical warrior. Now, he looks good like this, but I do want to highlight another issue I have with this figure. And it's possibly just my copy but i have a feeling that's not the case so when you look at the back of his harness it uses that same little buckle and tab system that most of the other he-man figures do unfortunately the tabs don't stay inside the buckle area i'll show you what i mean like so you got to pass that first little tab or notch right there or wedge whatever to call it but it won't stay it slides back through far too easily it doesn't catch and just from its own tension it's going to pull out you can see they're both pulled out right now. And especially once you have the cape tucked under here and just pulling it even tighter, it's you know more likely to do so. Uh, so that's a problem because it's no longer secure, makes it a little bit loose. And uh, 
I've never had this issue on any of my other Motu figures, both Masterverse or Origins. Their buckles have always held very, very well, but his do not. And when left alone and left static like this, they'll tend to stay, you know, where they're at, more or less okay. But once you start moving around posing him, these will sometimes just come completely undone. And then you just get the harness just kind of hanging like this, and, you know, you have to keep messing with it and fixing it. But you're never going to get it to actually stay. Like, you can get them to just kind of rest in there inside the loops, but they're never going to really latch. So that is a bit of an issue. Um, I don't know why it's like that. Maybe it's just my toy's tolerance, but I have a feeling that's going to be fairly universal. So something just to keep an eye out for. Now let's go ahead and check out his accessories. So first, we're going to have him dual wield his really awesome swords. The halves of the Sword of Power. So the Sword of He, if you're a classics collector. That's the name they went with for that. All right, so you just squeeze them in past the thumb, get them in there. The handle part of the dark half of the sword is a bit thicker than the light one, so it might be a little harder to get in his hands, but it's still very doable. So you get him wheeling this. Now this, I absolutely love. I think that, especially if you put like his big woolly shoulders on, makes him look like an absolute berserker. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to display my gray skull with both swords in hand because you don't get a whole lot of dual wielding Motu characters. So I really like this. Plus the swords themselves are just really awesome to look at, so I definitely want to have them both on display. Speaking of things that are awesome to look at, his bracers and belt, while just your standard, you know, generic pieces, are done up in this really nice metallic finish. Like, the inner part is like a bronze, and then the outer trim and the little studs are more of a gold color, and they all really shine. I think it's the same gold used on this sword right here. It looks really, really good. He's even got some gold on his harness there. He looks phenomenal. Um, even on his little, I don't know what you call this, little hair clip thing. Got a cool looking X on it. Uh, Posability is what you'd expect, right? Ball joint in the torso, double ball joint head, universal shoulders, double bent elbows, the wrists, all that fun stuff. I know I'm doing this a little out of order. Uh, your waist swivel's good, universal hips. Everything works really well. The tolerances are quite good for all the joints. A uh, couple of elbow and knee joints that are a bit tight, but that's always the case. Like every one of these figures, whether it's Master of the Universe or even the Marvel Legends, which are built very similarly, you always got at least that one tight joint that just make, makes you cringe a little bit because you're like, ooh, don't break. <laughs> you usually got to exercise the joint a few times to loosen it up. All right, so that looks very cool. And he looks awesome, you know, with the two swords. But say you want to, you know, give him his nice looking shield here. So we'll take this one hand out and we'll give him his flatter, more open hand, which is meant to have this slide over. Now the shield itself is a different mold from He-Man's, but the little strap piece that's pressed into it appears to be the same piece. So just the two leather looking straps, they go over the hand and the bracer, at least the first one does, and this one just kind of goes in the palm of his hand and rests there. So he can have this really nice looking shield, which complements the uh, design on his chest piece, just like He-Man's. So very, very neat looking, really big fan of that. Actually, take that back. He-Man's shield does not have that design on it. I'm not sure who I was thinking of there. Not He-Man, though. All right, so that looks pretty cool. And then lastly, we have another alternate hand for him. And this is just a closed fist. So you can make it look like he's punching something, like he's holding his fist up in anger, you know, whatever you want to do with him. And lastly, let's check out the alternate head. So we'll pop the old one off. Pretty tight, but it will go. Put the other head on. This is just more of a neutral expression, more stoic looking version of Grey Skull rather than the snarling battle ready version. All right, there we go. Let's get him posed up. See, there, there goes the chest harness falling apart on me. That's a big old hit against this toy, I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> because, like, not only does it not function as intended, it's just annoying to deal with. It is. Shouldn't have to worry about things falling apart as you're posing your toy. All right, so we can get something a little more neutral. You know, like he's maybe giving a speech or something. I'm not sure which head sculpt I like more. 
The more neutral one seems a bit more in character for him, but that's also because we only ever saw him in a rather calm and jovial state during the show. He was never really engaged in battle, so this more, uh, I guess, angry looking face, it, it seems uncharacteristic of him, but I'm sure, you know, during his time on uh, Eternia, he probably made that face a lot when he was fighting the hordes of evil. Now here's a comparison with the Wave 1 figure He-Man and his derpy, way too happy looking face. It's one thing I will absolutely give Grayskull props for, at least his facial expressions are way cooler than this He-Man's. <laughs> Why couldn't He-Man look half as serious as Grayskull does? Uh, but you can see they make for quite a pairing. Uh, as far as body type and everything, they're exactly the same. From, you know, the torso, the legs, the boots, all that, the loincloth area, the belt. The only real differences in their getup is the obvious, you know, chest harness, which is different between them. And then also He-Man actually has his classic, like, extended buckler, like the original toy does, rather than the two small bracers like most uh, Origins and Masterverse toys have. Now, our Grayskull, he just opts for the two bracers, which is fine. He's doing his own thing. Helps set them apart a little bit. But they do look like, you know, really quite a pair. And to see, you know, this very long-lost ancestor with the newest Guardian of the Sword of Power, one could have a lot of fun setting up elaborate battle, you know, dioramas and pictures and stuff with these two just fighting, you know, whether you want to be Hordak, Skeletor, some other evil... You know, hopefully the Snake Men someday in the Masterverse aesthetic. Now, I will say, just going by looks alone, I really do like the Grayskull toy more. He's so much more regal looking. Uh, the cape really just sells it. The metallic coloring on his bracers and sword and shield and all that. I, I think he just feels a little less plasticky. And also, like I said, the face expressions are just way, way better than He-Man's. Now what we can do to have a little bit of fun with these two, we could have them swap some accessories. Like I bet you might want to know what Grayskull's cape looks like on He-Man. And I don't see any reason it wouldn't be compatible. These Velcro straps should be able to slide under He-Man's harness just as well as they do Grayskull's. So let's see. Slide that off. Sit the king aside here. I just want to stand up. Come on, buddy. Work with us. There we go. All right, so let's try to slide these through He-Man's harness. It should work. It should be roughly the same size. I think his is going to be a little bit tighter, though, so... I may have to take that into account. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, you can wriggle it in there. It is a much tighter squeeze, though. That's for sure. Okay. So we got the one side. See, Gray Skulls, his harness has, like, a little bit of a lift in the top of the shoulders made specifically so these can slide under more easily. But you can still get it to go with He-Man. You just gotta force it through a little bit. There we go. Close that Velcro. And let's bring this up. So it sits on his shoulders. Look at that. King He-Man. I like that. Does that cape not make this figure look ten times better? <laughs> like, seriously. He looks much bigger, much more intimidating, and just much more of an authority figure now. I actually like that. I bet people have a lot of fun with customs and stuff. In fact, I can see a lot of people just taking this He-Man and trying to make it like their classic Gray Skull or their, you know, 2000X Gray Skull who did just look like He-Man more or less. I can see that happening quite a bit. Right now, let's mess with their accessories a little. So I'm gonna take the shields away for a moment. I'll wriggle them over those bracers. To Get the straps off. There we go. Oops. Let me give him back his other weapon holding hand. Like so. So he can wield whatever I need him to. Fix his chest harness again. That's annoying. <laughs> it seems to be this one side coming off more than the other. I don't know if it's just the way I'm doing it or if one's just looser than the other. Who knows? Okay, so get all this. Get him resituated. Do the same for He-Man here, and then slide this off, and swap out the hand with his other weapon building hand. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead, remove the Sword of Power from He-Man, if he'll let me. Seems rather attached to it. 
And we're going to give He-Man the two broken halves, the incomplete halves, whatever we're going to call it, from Grayskull. A bit of a looser fit on him. He doesn't hold them nearly as well. That's a shame. At least that hand doesn't, but that might be stretched out from holding the uh, completed power sword, which does seem to be a little bit thicker. Alright, get in there, buddy. I know you want to hold it. I know you want to. Don't pretend you don't. Think of all the cool photos we can take once you hold this. See, it's a lot tighter. So it might just be that this hand has already been kind of stretched out from holding his other sword for so long. So keep him posed with that. All right, that looks really cool, huh? He-Man with the dual swords. Gray Skull his too. Or give him He-Man's, I should say. This one's probably easier just to push down in the middle. Yep, all right. So there, you can get Gray Skull wielding the completed sword of power as he once did many moons ago. And you get He-Man, you know, dual wielding the incomplete swords. And there's definitely a lot of photographic potential in this. You can have, you know, classic King Grayskull fighting his battles with his trusty sword. You can have He-Man during his, you know, tragic death scene in the first episode of Revelations, separating the power sword into two pieces right before he goes uh, kaput. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do with these two. Additionally, their shields should be completely compatible because, like I said, it's the same shape and it's got the same strap pieces in it. So, yeah, a lot of fun you can have getting the two of these together. And this completes our look at the new King Gray Skull. Aside from some functional issues with the chest harness, I find this to be a phenomenal figure. This toy has so much presence to it. I mean, it just reeks of, like, warrior king coolness that even if you don't collect Motu, I think it's just a really cool figure to have on a shelf, like amongst, you know, other cool warrior type figures. I mean, everything from the big shoulder pads to the soft goods cape that you can pose in every which way, the metallic finish on the belt and bracers, the really cool looking swords, the great face sculpts, uh, the metallic shield, all that stuff. Really, really cool. And, you know, he's got a modular nature to him too. You can take the cape off if you're not feeling it, you want to go more minimalist. You can have him have a shield instead of the two swords. A lot of different things you can do. And, you know, you can also use his accessories to complement other Motu toys, right? You can have any of the other characters holding either of these two swords, which played a big part in the story. You can give any of the He-Man shaped characters his big, you know, shoulder pauldrons and big cape and all that to make them look cool. There's a lot of value here. Now, I know there's going to be some people that just really hate the redesign and they're not going to want to figure this guy. And, you know, if that's the case, I can't really help you there. If you just hate the design that much, you probably won't like this. But if you are willing to, you know, look at just what makes for a cool figure and, you know, what works in a vacuum, I think you could still like this guy. Like, a good example, I'm not a fan of the Wave 2 Tila's design, right? The way she looks for most of the show. I just think it's bland, very out of place looking compared to the other Motu characters where it loses that whole high fantasy barbarian look to it. But the toy... I thought was fantastic. The Wave 2 figure I thought was really, really well done and captured everything about the design like flawlessly. It was a lot of fun to play with, lots of accessories. Uh, so you may feel the same way here where you're not happy about how they change the character, but you can still appreciate a cool toy. And who knows, for those that are just really, really craving the classic design or, you know, the 2000X design, Masterverse casts a wide web and I would not be shocked if they eventually open it up to the 2002 cartoon and you might be able to get that more traditional King Grayskull. Maybe you'll even get his giant battle lion mount. Who knows? But for what this guy is, I really like him. I think he's well worth the 30 bucks and I just enjoy just about everything about him, aside from having to constantly fix the chest harness, which if you're lucky, maybe you won't have that issue. So personally, I very much recommend him. I think if you do track this guy down in Target, you'll be a very happy camper. He's great fun to play with, great fun to pose, got lots of cool accessories for himself or for other figures. He's a real trip. Very thoroughly enjoy it, and I think you will too. Of course, that is just how I feel about Grayskull. So now I want to know what you all think of this toy. Do you think this is a cool figure? Do you enjoy the direction they went with the cape and how all that works, and the big, you know, shoulder pads, the twin swords, we finally get to get, you know, the good and evil hands of the power sword? Or is there something you don't like about this figure? Either the design itself, maybe you're not big on cloth good stuff, maybe you think they could have done better in some way, maybe better weapons, better face if you don't like the face. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. 
If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let so YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this very cool look at the new Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation King Grayskull. And with all that said, I will see you next time.